Playing with Power MTG now has a Patreon. When you support us on Patreon, you can get early access to deck lists, videos, and Patreon only videos like commentary, raw footage, and more. Check out the link in the description below and subscribe today. Playing with Power is also supported by Flipside Gaming. When you use the promo code POWER in all caps, you get 10% off orders, $10 or more. It saves you money and helps us out at the same time. Finally, please subscribe to us on social media. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Check out the description below and subscribe today. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. We had a different set of commanders lined up for our first episode, but then something happened. Urza, Lord High Artificer, was spoiled. We knew this card was going to be powerful, but we wanted to know just how powerful he was, so we set to work. We started brewing and decided that the world needed to see what he was capable of. We put him together, and now you get to see what he can do. So let's start off by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan playing Urza, Lord High Artificer. It was only fitting that Ryan and his love for monocolored decks get to pilot Urza. His opening hand consists of Reshape, Tezzeret the Seeker, Force of Will, Soul Ring, Scalding Tarn, and two islands. Next, we have Dylan piloting Brago, King Eternal. This stacks and blink deck controls the board before he locks out his opponent and steals the win. His opening hand has an Azorius Signet, Ghostly Flicker, Lavinia of the Tenth, Marsh Flats, a Plains, and two islands. After that, we have newcomer Garrett, piloting Tassiger the Golden Fang. This season's past deck aims to control the board before executing one of its combos. His opening hand contains Soul Ring, Bloom Tender, Ad Nauseum, Beast Within, Wooded Foothills, Bloodstained Mire, and an Island. Finally, we have another newcomer, Folger, piloting Thrasios, Triton Hero, and Vile Smasher the Fierce. This deck named 4-Color Rashmi grinds value in the early game before pulling ahead later for a combo finish. His opening hand contains Command Tower, Mystic Remora, Flooded Strand, Sig River Cutthroat, Dispel, Mox Diamond, and an Underground River. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Dylan wins the Blindfolded Makeup Challenge and gets to start us off. Dylan plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it for a Tundra. He passes the turn. Folger plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding an Underground River. After that, he casts everyone's favorite fish, Mystic Remora. Ryan responds by casting Force of Will, exiling Tezzeret from his hand and paying one life. Folger responds by casting Dispel, countering Force of Will. Mystic Remora resolves, and Folger passes the turn. Garrett plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He cracks it for a Tropical Island. After that, he casts Soul Ring. He ends his turn. Ryan plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He cracks it to fetch up an island. He likes what Garrett did and decides to play a Soul Ring of his own. All through, he ships the turn to Dylan. Dylan plays an island for turn. He then casts an Azorius Signet. He gives the turn over to Folger. Folger pays for his Murmora on his upkeep. He plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He cracks it to find a Watery Grave and to play Untap, taking two life. This was right around the time when we forgot to turn our overhead lights, so we did that here. Following up, he casts Legacy's Allure. All finished up, he passes. Garrett plays a Bloom Tender for turn. He then casts his own copy of Mystic Remora. Smug as a bug, he ships to Ryan. Ryan plays an Island for turn. He casts a Back to Basics. Everyone with their multicolored decks groans heavily, and the enchantment resolves. He passes the turn. Dylan plays a Plains for turn. He casts a Detention Sphere, targeting Garrett's Bloom Tender. He ends his turn. Due to Back to Basics, Folger lets his Remora die on his upkeep. He plays a Swamp for turn. He then casts Sig, River Cutthroat. All finished up, he gives the turn to Garrett. During his upkeep, Garrett pays for his Mystic Remora. He pays two life and casts a Taxian Pro, targeting Folger and drawing a card. He plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn, cracking it for an Underground Sea. Afterwards, he casts Counterbalance. All wrapped up, he ends his turn. Ryan plays an Island for turn. Staring down a Legacy's Allure, a Mystic Remora, and a Counterbalance, he decides to pass. Dylan plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps the Ancient Tomb to help pay for Lavinia of the Tenth. Lavinia resolves, and everyone's three CMC cards become detained. He ships the turn to Folger. Folger plays a Polluted Delta for turn. He cracks it for an island. Next, he casts Talisman of Dominance. 
All through, he passes. Garrett's Mystic Remora dies on his upkeep. Also during his upkeep, he casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a nature's claim. He plays an overgrown tomb, untapped, taking two life. He passes to Ryan. Ryan plays an island for turn. He follows up with a jeweled amulet. He passes. Dylan plays an island for turn. He casts Ghostly Flicker, targeting Lavinia and Tundra. Folger responds by casting Fluster Storm, and the Ghostly Flicker is countered. After that, Dylan attacks Folger for four with Lavinia and passes the turn. On his turn, Folger casts a Birds of Paradise. He follows up with a Rhystic Study. Not wanting to pay the tax on his game plan, Garrett casts Beats Within, targeting Back to Basics. Ryan responds by casting Blue Sun Zenith for three, looking for an answer. He does not find an answer, and the Beast Within resolves. His Back to Basics is destroyed, and he gets a 3-3 Beast. Then Folger's Rhystic Study resolves. After that, Folger passes. Garrett plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn, and passes. Ryan plays a Mox Opal and pays the Rhystic Tax. Ryan then casts Reshape, sacrificing Jeweled Amulet. Garrett responds by casting Ad Nauseam. Ryan responds by casting Fluster Storm, targeting Ad Nauseam. After Ad Nauseam is countered, Folger casts Force of Will, targeting Reshape. Force of Will resolves, and the Reshape is countered. Ryan attacks Folger for three with his Beast, and then passes the turn to Dylan. Dylan plays a Plains for turn. He casts a Consecrated Sphinx, paying the Rhystic Tax. After that, he attacks Folger with Lavinia for four, and ends his turn. During his upkeep, Folger puts another counter on his Legacy's Allure, bringing the total counters to four. He sacrifices it to gain control of Consecrated Sphinx. He plays a Forest for turn. Next, he casts Thrasios, Triton Hero. All wrapped up, and rather smitten, he passes. At the end of turn, Garrett casts Nature's Claim, targeting Detention Sphere, paying the tax with a Cephalid Colosseum. When Garrett draws for turn, Consecrated Sphinx's trigger goes onto the stack. Folger responds by casting Lim Duel's Vault. He holds priority and pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, targeting wooded foothills in Garrett's graveyard to ensure he cannot get the counterbalance trigger. Garrett responds by tapping his Colosseum and losing a life to cast Narset's Reversal, targeting Lim Duel's Vault, paying the Rhystic Tax. Narset's Reversal resolves, and Garrett looks at the top five. He likes what he sees and rearranges them accordingly. Noxious Revival resolves, and he puts the Wooded Foothills on the top of his library. Then Consecrated Sphinx's Trigger resolves, and Folger draws two cards. In his main phase, Garrett plays a Gilded Drake, paying the Rhystic Tax. Everyone knows what he's targeting, and Folger responds by casting Fire Covenant, paying seven life, and killing Consecrated Sphinx and Bloom Tender for good measure. Next, Garrett casts Windfall. Everyone is super happy that Consecrated Sphinx is no longer on the board, and everyone discards their hand and draws six. After that, Garrett plays a Wooded Foothills and passes to Ryan. On his turn, Ryan pays two life and casts Jataxian Pro of targeting Folger. He looks at Folger's hand and draws a card. He plays a Mana Vault, paying the Rhystic Tax. He plays a Ponder, paying the tax again. He looks at the top three, decides to shuffle, and draws a card. After that, he casts Trenosphere. Folger responds by casting Nature's Claim, targeting Counterbalance. Garrett responds by cracking his Wooded Foothills for a Breeding Pool into play untapped. He then casts Fluster Storm, targeting Nature's Claim. Nature's Claim is countered, and the Trenosphere resolves. Ryan then casts Mystic Remora. He attacks Folger for three with his beast, and passes it to Dylan. Dylan plays a Plains for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb and takes two life to cast Mist Meadow Witch, paying the Rhystic Tax. He activates the Witch, targeting his Lavinia. He passes the turn. At the end of Dylan's turn, Lavinia enters the battlefield and detains all three CMC permanents again. Folger plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He then casts Toxic Deluge, paying four life and wiping the board. He cracks his Marsh Flats for a Blood Crypt into play untapped, taking two life. He then casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Garrett. He looks through Garrett's deck, finds a card, and exiles it face down. All finished up, he passes. Garrett plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He cracks it, taking just a bit longer to try and find what Folger may have taken, and fetches up a Watery Grave into play untapped, taking two life. He taps his Colosseum to help cast Yog Moth's Will. Will resolves, and Garrett casts a Mystic Remora from his graveyard. All through, he passes. Ryan pays for his Remora on his upkeep. He plays a Cavern of Souls for turn, naming Human. After that, he casts Urza, Lord High Artificer. Urza resolves, and a Construct enters the battlefield. Next, he casts Static Orb, paying the Rhystic Tax. Through heavy groaning of the table, Ryan passes to Dylan. On his turn, Dylan taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Basalt Monolith. With nothing else, he passes the turn. 
Folger plays a Grove of the Burn Willows for turn. He pays three to cast a Mana Crypt. Garrett's Counterbalance Trigger goes onto the stack, and he reveals a Flooded Strand, countering the Crypt. With no mana and nothing else to do, he shifts the turn to Garrett. Garrett lets his Mr. Grimora die in his upkeep. He plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it to fetch up a Bayou. Next, he casts Seedborn Muse. He passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan uses Urza's ability to tap Static Orb for mana. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Mystic Remora. Garrett responds to the Remora trigger by sacrificing his Cephalid Colosseum to draw three and discard three. Ryan plays an Island for turn. He casts Jace for Inns Prodigy. He attacks Folger for six with his Construct, killing him. He passes the turn to Dylan. On his turn, Dylan taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Open the Armory. Garrett's Counterbalance trigger goes onto the stack, and he reveals a Negate, countering the spell. With nothing else to do, Dylan ends his turn. Garrett casts Copy Artifact on his turn. Copy Artifact resolves and enters as a copy, a Static Orb, hoping to slow Ryan down. He delves away some of his graveyard to cast Tassiger, the Golden Fang. He ends his turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan taps his Static Orb for mana through Urza to cast Chain of Vapor, targeting Garrett's Static Orb. Garrett responds by casting the Gate. Ryan responds by casting Muddle the Mixture. Garrett sacks the land to copy Chain of Vapor, targeting Ryan's Trinosphere. Ryan sacks the land to copy Chain of Vapor, targeting Garrett's Seedborn Muse. Garrett then sacks the land again to copy Chain yet again, targeting Ryan's Urza. Urza, Seedborn, Trinosphere, and Copy Artifact all return to their owner's hands. Then the turn finally passes. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for Mystic Remora. He activates Jace, drawing and discarding, and transforming him. He plays an Island for turn. He activates Jace's second ability, targeting Reshape. He casts his Reshape for two, sacrificing Mox Opal. He fetches up a Grim Monolith. After that, he casts Power Artifact. With Grim Monolith and Power Artifact, he now has infinite colorless mana. He casts Urza again. Now he has infinite colorless mana and infinite blue mana. He uses Urza's third ability to exile his entire deck. He casts a Laboratory Maniac and follows it up with a Brainstorm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Urza is here, and it is clear he is a force to be reckoned with. He is a very powerful commander, but he didn't dominate the whole game. Once he hits the battlefield, however, things swing very heavily in his favor. He gets a blocker and a mana source all in one, and has the ability to win with infinite mana combos. He has the potential to be tier 1, but he's not breaking the format anytime soon. We highly recommend you check out our brew for this commander in the description below. We would love to hear everyone's feedback about this brew, as well as this game. We hope you enjoyed this special gameplay video showcasing Urza's abilities. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.